Good morning. It's a joy for me to share with you in the celebration of the life of my beloved friend, devoted and loving husband and brother and father and pillar of his community and loved ones all around. We are joined together in worship of our God and sharing in the love of our Lord as we remember that there is a homecoming for us all through God's grace as Frank is enjoying life in a way beyond what we can even conceive today as we remember and celebrate his great life and legacy. Would you receive with me for our call to worship these words of scripture? The psalmist reminds us our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Our Lord also proclaimed these words of comfort from Matthew's gospel. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. The psalmist also reminds us that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, you are the giver of life and love. You are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs, O oh Lord, even before we ask. And you even know and are patient with our ignorance at times in asking. Show us now, oh God, your grace that as we face this mystery of death with so many questions, we may also see the light of your eternal love. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life over death. And help us to live as those prepared to die as we celebrate and remember your love and the life of your faithful son, Frank. So that when our days are ended, we may be enabled to die with the same grace that Frank did, knowing that his hope was sure and certain through you, our Lord Jesus Christ. It's in your precious name that we pray. Amen. Frank, or let me restate that, Franklin Gerald Gay Jr., of Cape Canaveral, Florida, passed away peacefully on April 17, 2023, with his wife, family, and their little dog, Chanel, by his side. He was 78 years old. He is survived by his wife. I'm going to give her another year, too, Ginger. 57 years. Rebecca Benedict Gay, his sister, Mary Virginia, Ginger, Gay Britt, and Daryl who is also deceased. His daughter, Stephanie Gay Raymond, Benjamin Jr. deceased, and his son, Franklin Gay III, and wife, Lauren. Seven grandchildren, Franklin Gerald Gay IV, Juliana Townsend Gay, Stephanie Raymond Bixman, and Dakota, Anna Margaret Raymond, Capers Ladner Gay, Benjamin Joseph Raymond III, and Christiana Gay Raymond, and three precious great-grandchildren, Azriel, Aria, Cuvo, <laughs> it's tough on a Mississippi boy, one grandchild, Rebecca Catherine Raymond, preceded him in death. He's also survived by a niece, Catherine Britt Marciano, a nephew, Charles Andrew Britt, three great nieces, and two great nephews. Frank was born on May 16, 1944, in Ripley, the son of Franklin Gerald Gay and Catherine Barnett Ladner Gay. He graduated from the University of Mississippi, Ole Miss, with a bachelor's degree in business, and from Memphis State University with an MBA. He re relocated to Charleston, South Carolina with his wife. He served for 10 years 
as an assistant professor of business at Charleston Southern University, formerly the Baptist College of Charleston. He began renovating historic Charleston homes and later became an innovator in the bed and breakfast industry in Charleston, giving rise to a series of inns in Charleston and Savannah. He developed and owned the Battery Carriage House Inn, the Elliott House Inn, and the Meeting Street Inn in Charleston, as well as the Eliza Thompson House in Savannah. He then launched the Carriage House Inn's brand, which expanded in states beyond the Low Country. He was an active member and served in the American Hotel and Motel Association. In 1992, they moved to Kissimmee, Florida, where he owned and operated Condo Tales, a vacation condominium rental company servicing tourist visiting area attractions upon retirement. He and his wife, Becky, moved to his childhood family home in Ripley, Mississippi, and later to Cape Canaveral, Florida, where he lived for the remainder of his life. He grew up as a Presbyterian at Ripley Presbyterian Church here in Ripley, here in this building. He later became an Episcopalian and was a member for over 30 years of the Cathedral Church of St. Luke in Orlando, Florida. He faithfully centered his life around God, his Christian faith, his wife, and his family. He was kind and generous to all. Franklin Gerald Gray Jr., Pop Pop, left a beautiful legacy for his family and is beloved by his wife, his sister, his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, and all family and friends in his life. It is a joy for us to celebrate this life. Would you join with me in standing as we share together in our congregational hymn? We'll sing the first four verses. Thank you. 
a writing from the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 11. I'm going to begin with verse 19. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. And they spoke the words to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists about proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to the to, to, uh, excuse me, then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he'd found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people. It was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I began reflecting upon Frank's life, our friendship, his impact upon this worship community in particular, his family, his friends, his colleagues in business, his church family in South Florida. There were a couple of words that came to mind to me that Frank did a great job of symbolizing. One it was that he was an encourager. One who would listen to a dry, stale sermon maybe that I preached one Sunday, Ginger, and say, oh, that was such a powerful message, Jody. Or maybe it would be his reflections in our Bible study as he would sit with us on a Wednesday night and always add commentary and comments and a little laughter along the way. I remember one study we were talking about Paul's ministry to the church in Corinth. We spoke of that this week in our Bible study, our virtual Bible study, and how Paul at times found himself at his wit's end ministering to the church in Corinth. Frank, hearing those similar reflections once, said, Yeah, my daddy always told me, don't go to Corinth. Nothing good ever came out of there. Of course, he was talking about Corinth, Mississippi, and there were some rogues and ruffians along the state line back in the day. Frank was a giver, a giver of his talents, his energy, his love, and his resources. He liked to invest in the lives of those around him. But one thing that I want to focus on about Frank today is I reflected on the life and ministry of Barnabas who also was known as a person of encouragement. As Luke, the writer of Acts, says in chapter 4, he even says that the name Barnabas can also be translated to mean son of encouragement. That was a great gift that Frank brought to his family and to the faith community. But even beyond that, what Barnabas was known of as, as we heard in our scripture today, was he, one, he was one who helped spread joy through worship. Did you hear as he gathered with the church in Antioch? That in his encouragement, he rejoiced with them in worship and encouraged them to find joy in the Lord as well. What I'm trying to say is Frank was a man who took his worship very seriously. 
I remember countless times him sitting right over here to my left. And as we had the prayers of the people, Frank would oftentimes, I think, go down on a knee in the good Episcopalian fashion and fervently pray for his church family, for his friends, and for his community. He cherished and loved to be in the house of worship. He understood, I want to say it was part of his Presbyterian heritage, that the beginning and end of our faith in the words of our catechism that says, what's the chief end of man? What's the chief end of humanity? But to love and worship God and enjoy him forever. It begins with worship. You see, that was the message that Barnabas took to the church in Antioch. I don't think it's a coincidence that it tells us after Barnabas' influence in ministry to the folks there that that was when the believers first became known as Christians. Because Barnabas poured into them encouragement and worship. Pillars of our faith, pillars of Frank's life as he exuded that with every fiber that was in him. So I give thanks for his witness today, for his example today. As we celebrate his life, I think it is so appropriate that this coming Sunday will be Trinity Sunday in the life of our church. where We celebrate the Father, the Son, In the Holy Spirit, the worship of the triune God, Frank would be pleased to know that we are also celebrating his life with that special emphasis on bringing glory to God. One of our readings for this week will be the Great Commission. Many of us focus on those words of our call to be disciples, to make disciples of all nations, to go forth and proclaim everything that Jesus has taught, right? But the beginning of that commission, what I love, is often overlooked in our haste to get to the commission part as that when the disciples gathered on the mountain where Jesus had directed them, their first response in faith was to worship. So this day, friends, I pray that you, family, have a little more comfort and a little more joy as we gather in celebration of Frank's life, giving glory to his Savior who gave Frank the sure and certain hope that sickness, sorrow, tears are but but for a moment, for life, love, and joy is forever. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed will be thy Daily bread and for.
forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For Thou is the kingdom and the power and glory. Pray with me. Oh God, we are indeed grateful for the gift of prayer, the gift of music, the gift of love, the gift of life. We give thanks specifically for the life of your faithful son, Frank, and all in him that was good and loving and kind and example of life and love that we have in you. In you, O oh God, we are comforted as we pray, O oh Holy Spirit, and ask that you continue to clothe this family with grace and mercy in the days ahead, that they may know that you are with them. And even in our questions and in our sorrow that Frank is with you, that his life has been fully restored. We thank you, O oh God, that through grace we all have that gift if we entrust ourselves to you. For you came to this world to embrace our brokenness, to give restoration to all who believe in you. May we be comforted in the days ahead. And may our lives reflect your love in this community and the world around us so that you may be glorified through our lives and with our joy. And now, God, as your children, we join our voices as one and say in prayer the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For our scriptural charge, I offer these words as God's children. You are holy and dearly loved. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, and patience, forgiving one another as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect harmony. And for our blessing, Aaron and Moses offered this priestly blessing to the people of Israel that we still celebrate as God's children today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance, his gaze upon you, and give you peace now and forever. Amen.